Robert Sauco supplied labor for the war economy. He appeared to enjoy the memory of his efficiency when he boasted at a ministerial meeting that out of five million foreign workers brought to Germany, fewer than 200,000 came voluntarily. Sauco became Hitler's slave labor czar in 1942. His job was to provide workers for the munitions factories run by Albert Speer. Zauko found it difficult to find the millions of workers Speer demanded of him. He conscripted laborers from across Europe and enslaved them in labor camps. Often they were worked to death or starved to death there. It was treatment Zauko took no credit for and blamed on his fellow defendant in the dock, Herr Speer. Ich bitte diese May I explain the motives which prompted the Führer's decision? He described the situation at that time, at the end of the winter of 1941-1942. Many hundreds of German locomotives, almost all the mechanized armored units, tanks, planes and mechanical weapons had become useless as a result of the catastrophe of that abnormally hard winter. Hundreds of thousands of German soldiers had suffered terribly from the cold. Many divisions had lost their arms and supplies. The Führer explained to me that if the race with the enemy for new arms, new munitions, and new dispositions of forces was not won now, the Soviets would be as far as the Channel by the next winter. Appealing to my sense of duty and asking me to put into it all I could, he gave me the task of obtaining new foreign labor for employment in the German war economy. Did you consider the employment of foreign labor justifiable from a general point of view? On account of the necessities which I have mentioned, I considered the employment of foreign workers justifiable according to the principles which I enforced and advocated and to which I also adhered in my field of work. I was, after all, a German, and I could feel only as a German. Who actually carried out the recruitment of the foreign workers? The actual recruitment of foreign workers was the task of the German offices established in the various regions, the offices of the military commanders or similar civilian German institutions. You ordered recruitment to be voluntary. What was the success of that voluntary recruitment? Several million foreign workers came to Germany voluntarily, as voluntary recruitment was the underlying principle. Now comes the remark on which I want you to comment. You answered, of the five million foreign workers who came to Germany, less than 200,000 came voluntarily. Please explain that contradiction. I see that this is another interruption which I made. All I wanted to say by it was that Herr Kerl's opinion that all workers had come voluntarily was not quite correct. This proportion which is put down here by the stenographer or the man writing the records is quite impossible. How that error occurred, I do not know. I never saw that record. After this commercial break, a prosecutor cross-examines Zaukol about slave labor. French assistant prosecutor Jacques Herzog cross-examined Zaukol about the use of slave labor to support the war economy, which was run by Albert Speer. Do you know how many French workers were deported to Germany as the result of your various actions? As far as I can remember, I cannot say exactly offhand, there were 700,000 to 800,000 French workers employed in Germany. However, I cannot tell you exactly without documents. I submit to you the interrogatory of General von Falkenhausen, who testified before a French magistrate on November 27, 1945. I read from page 1, question 3. Question. On October 10, 1942, there appeared an order which instituted the compulsory labor service in Belgium and in the departments of northern France. I skip two lines. Answer. I was commander for northern France and Belgium. 
question. Does the witness remember having promulgated this order? Answer. I do not remember exactly the text of this order because it was drawn up after a long struggle with Zalkel, the plenipotentiary general for the allocation of labor. Question. Did you have any difficulties with Zalkel? Answer. I was fundamentally opposed to the institution of compulsory labor service, and it was only after having received orders that I consented to promulgate the decree. Do you still deny that General von Falkenhausen issued this order under pressure from you? I deny the version as it is put before me now emphatically. Is it true that you demanded that the death penalty should be applied to officials who, for instance, hindered your action? It is true that at a conference with the French Premier Laval, I demanded by way of negotiations the death penalty in cases of very serious obstruction. Then you admit that you demanded the application of the death penalty in the case of these officials? Yes, if a serious case of sabotage was in question according to martial law. Is it true that your task was to procure for the German war industry the labor it required? That was one of my tasks. In this respect, were you responsible to the defendant Speer, Minister for Armaments and Munitions, for the carrying out of your task? I was responsible to the four-year plan and to the Führer, and I had instructions from the Führer to meet the requirements of Reich Minister Speer as far as it was possible for me to do so. Did the defendant Speer approve of all the steps which you took in recruiting foreign labor? At all events, he agreed, or he demanded, that workers should be put at his disposal. Sometimes, however, we did not entirely agree as to how it should be done.